Hi guys, it's Hash from the Disciples. You're coming back to you with another Master Duel video because uh, you guys seem to really like the last two we made. Uh, myself, Cormac, and Gabe's video as well. Um, and today I'm going to be going through a more of a discussion based kind of video where I just talk to myself and I uh, hope you guys listen. Um, <laughs> there was a tournament that was hosted by Duel Links Entertainment yesterday. There are Duel Links group uh, that are branching out into Master Duel now because that's what most of them are doing right now. And um, this was their first ever Master Duel tournament. It was pretty big. It was 118 players. Um, and um, it was uh, seven rounds of Swiss, best of one. And then uh, top 32 onwards was best of three. I ended up winning the tournament, thankfully, which was really nice. And uh, this is the deck I played. So my idea for this video is to just go as in-depth as humanly possible about Dinosaur. Um, and just walk you guys through the entire deck, explain the theory behind why I chose it, and just share my thoughts on how the tournament went. So yeah, um, let's hop into it. So I played Dinosaur. Um, the main deck and the, and the extra deck are, as you guys can see there. Um, the side deck is also here. Um, which I will also go through, um, but yeah, just to clarify, the side deck was only for top 32 onwards, because Swiss was best of one. Um, so yeah, um, unfortunately in Master Duel, you can't, uh, sort decks the way you want them to, so you have these drivers here and the gammas here, which is really obnoxious, but let's go through the main deck first. So, play one driver because we played two gamma. Head traps. We played three maxi. Played three Ash, played three Imper, and that was it for hat traps. Uh, we played Cold Bite, and uh, we played Prosp as our other non engine. Uh, Pankratops is also a going second card. And then we played for the Dino Engine, two OV because it's semi limited, three Misk, two Conductor, two Baby, one Pet, two Arco, two Pills. 3 Lost World, Terraforming, and obviously, I know I said Prosperity is not an engine, but Prosperity is also the god card of this deck. Um, and it is absolutely mandatory to play. Uh, the extra deck was Lagia, Dolka, Dweller, Rhapsody, Tornado Dragon, Baguska, Dugaras, Zeus, Linkaribo, Secure Gardener, Serb, Phoenix, Pentastag, which is the best card in this extra deck by far, uh, Nightmare Unicorn, and Axis Code Talker. So, first things first, if you ever have tried Master Duel, you know this deck is extremely expensive because there are so many ultra rares. And with that being said, my deck list is incomplete. Um, I'm missing Castell and Cyframe Lambda, which should be Rhapsody and Zeus because Rhapsody and Zeus just don't come up. Um, you have to play Castell in this deck for two reasons. Uh, Shen Shen being one, Colossus being the other. And you have to play Lambda because you play Gamma. If you don't play Gamma, you don't need to play Lambda. Um, I could have crafted Lambda because it's not an Ultra if I remember correctly. Let me check. Uh, yeah, it's super, but I completely forgot when I was trying to build this deck for the tournament. I made this deck and like, I already had it. I just modified it a bit for the tournament. And I completely forgot about Lambda because I, I had just added Gammas to the deck. Um, thankfully, it didn't punish me, but you should definitely play Lambda in this deck if you play it. So yeah, um, these are the changes I would make to the extra deck. The main deck is fine for the approach that it's taking, which I will get to in a bit. So the main deck isn't really missing anything per se. The side deck has uh, three Crows, one Meister, three Lancia, one Feather Duster, three Lightning Storm, one Twin, and three Cosmic. The only change I would make is I would go down on the back row removal because there is way too many. You don't need that much, especially with Prosperity and the fact that you're going second every single time. Um, and I would play Book of Eclipse instead, for two reasons. Um, this deck can't beat Colossus, like, for the love of its life. It's very, very hard. So you play Book of Eclipse, because it's the best Colossus out for this deck. For two reasons. Reason number one, it synergizes with Conductor, which is pretty self-explanatory. Reason number two, it baits Ash Blossom, which synergizes with your entire deck. Because your deck can be weak to Ash Blossom sometimes. And activating Book of Eclipse in hands where you are weak to Ash is very nice. Whether or not they have Colossus. So, Book of Eclipse is probably the card I would side. Uh, to deal with that issue. Um, otherwise, the deck has everything else that I needed to have. 
And now I am going to explain to you why I think this is a good choice and why I also wanted to play it. So, ever since, like, let's say, towards the end of 2020, so the first year of COVID, uh, I started picking this deck up. I had a lot of fun with it and I enjoyed playing it. And I thought that it was actually very skillful, which I will get into during this deck profile. Uh, which is something that is like, it doesn't really meet the eye, but you'll start learning some things uh, when you play Dinosaur. Um, about how to make your rougher matchups easier. Like, uh, for example, uh, a lot of people think that Eldritch is a bad matchup. It's not at all. Uh, you just need to play in a very specific way. You need to like, make sure that you have the right resources for one turn where you just push... So a lot of the time what people try to do is they go second with Dano and they try to go extremely aggressive into Eldritch. They try to like spam their entire hand, use their entire hand on the set 5 or the set 4 plus Floodgate, whatever. Um, and then they end up losing. Now, what this deck does instead, uh, or what you're supposed to do rather, is for example, you don't have all the pieces, you're missing some pieces. You just go Ovi, search Ovi. And then you try to play a slow game because they can't kill you. And then they start using up some of their traps because they need to try pushing. And that helps you go on the next turn and be able to push further because you have more cards now because you went Ovi Search Ovi, which is very good. And then also um, they have less um, because they committed trap cards so they can't push, which is good. Another thing to keep in mind is that Lost World is a very good card in all of these slower matchups because you abuse the token. You don't need to always go... Ovi summon token, uh, search misc, dump misc, and then try to use Ovi's effect in like the greedy way. You can always just go battle phase. Poke. There are also some very slow things, um, a very um, intricate things that you can do with like summoning baby instead of Ovi if you want to play around judgment. Because if you go lost world summon baby and they judgmented baby triggers, same goes for petite. Um, the ratio between baby and petite is as this because you need one petite to summon Pankratops tops sometimes whereas you need baby because it's the best one to have to loop with con what to loop with ovi raptor because what you end up doing is you can end up at the very end of your combo going baby summoning petite with conductor on the field so when you go conductor to set their cards they have uh, the petite can summon Pankratops tops or ovi which is ideally what you want because you want to be able to choose between either one more interruption which is enough which is like the finishing interruption that ends your opponent's turn or ov which is follow-up um with that being said most of the time the way you combo you end up with follow-up because you have misc and grave but misc is a very fragile piece of follow-up so the option that titty gives you between um ov and uh pancreatops is very useful in that regard another thing uh, that this deck really takes advantage of a spot of prosperity because not only does it help you with the consistency of the deck It helps you find your bomb cards very specifically lightning storm post side and maybe in master Duel format called by because of maxi or ash um, Which is really useful, but there's also the fact that believe it or not You can actually put 16,000 damage under prosperity and kill your opponent Which is something people don't see coming so they try to play, like, very conservatively because they're like, Ah, oh, I'm fine, I'm gonna have an next turn. And then you just go Pentastag Dugaras. And as long as your opponent has two monsters, which uh, they either usually do have, or they have one monster and then Lost World is the other one, that's usually game. Um, which is really nice because that basically means that Prosperity, effectively speaking, has no weaknesses or restrictions or limitations in this deck. Um... Cold Buy is a very good card in this deck because it helps you stop Ash. Um, Maxi, you do sometimes. You also have Ash to stop Maxi, Gamma to stop Maxi if they Maxi on Misc Effect while you have an open field. But um, Maxi is actually not that big of an issue, which is how I'm going to bridge to you why I chose this deck. So, this format that we have right now in Master Duel um, has started to take a shape. So, we know that Tri Brigade Zodiac is very popular. We know that um, Drytron, Virtual World, and Endermans, Peter to an extent, are all having their own player bases. None of them is overrepresented, but there is representation. Um, Adlich has its own representation of players. And then, obviously, there is 
Dino, I think, although most Dino decks I've seen are going first Dino decks with Scrap Raptor, which I don't think is the way to play the deck, because you go first, you have five cards to play with, and this deck is not the most consistent thing ever, so you can end up just passing back, and um, that does cause issues, because you pass back and then your opponent has a battle phase and they can kill you, because if they know that the matchup is Dino, they're gonna try and kill you, because this deck will punish them for not killing, um... Because it's just simply so good at breaking boards. Um, so yeah. Um, I think that's most of the meta. There's like... Some true Draco, some rogue. But Dano has a good time dealing with rogue decks in general. Because of the rank... Because of the extra deck. Uh, which I will get to in a bit. Um, so yeah. Given that this is the format. The idea I had in mind was just to play hand traps. And to play an engine that is very good inherently at going second. Lost World is one of the best cards going second for any deck ever. Um, so for those of you who don't know. When you, when you normal or special summon a dinosaur monster. You can special summon a token on their field. So against Tribrigate for example. In a lot of scenarios you get to hand trap them once. They like pass on like. Maybe Almiraj, maybe Ferijit, whatever it is, right? And they have a revolt set, whatever. Sure. And something you can do sometimes is you summon the um, the Lost World token onto their link zone. And that turns off revolt. Or you summon it uh, when they have like Apollosa DDL, which is breakable, by the way. If you summon it while they have Apollosa DDL... Um, they only have, so they, their field becomes Apollosa DDL on the token, so they only have three zones open. So, that means that unless they have, uh, legitimately, like, Special Summit Ferajit, uh, or Bear Broom, either or, uh, their revolt is dead, because they can't go four tries into, um, what's it face, uh, Shureg, uh, which is really good. And then, it also has another effect, which is when... Once per turn, if a normal monster on the field will be destroyed by battle or by card effect, and this is a continuous effect, so it doesn't activate, you can destroy that many dinosaur monsters from your deck. So it helps you trigger your babies and your petites from deck. Sometimes you dump Misk for its effect in the grave. Sometimes you dump Giant Rex just to banish it and summon Conductor. Um, it depends, but it helps you navigate your way going second because it's more of a because it's more of a consistency a consistency piece because of the battle phase because you can just attack at the token and it also has a very good effect where if your opponent controls a token they can't target monsters with anything except tokens so they can target your token but they can't target anything else which is really good um that combined with misc basically makes your dinosaur monsters very immune to anything um so yeah the deck is very resilient going second into driver grid uh, because of that reason and then, um, I guess these combo decks, you just play enough hand traps and then a dino starter is usually enough because these combo decks don't have hand traps to use back on you. Uh, Virtual World is a very hard matchup. Dino, uh, Drytron and Adamant Spater are a bit easy, are, are a bit easier. Actually, I would say probably favored. Uh, Virtual World is also manageable, but the issue with Virtual World is just that VFD is a turn ending card, so you can't really like have the luxury of, oh, they make their board and then you draw a card and then you try to play with six cards. That's something you can do against. Drytron sometimes, and against uh, Rock sometimes, but you can't do that against Virtual World at all. And on top of that, even if you stop VFD, Chucha can be an issue, because, as I said, Lost World is a consistency piece, and they could just Chucha pop Lost World, which is a really, really, really um, bad uh, thing for you. Um, but, with that being said, the question becomes, okay, let's assume you are able to, like, do all of this, break their board, stop them, whatever. What if they max you? And the answer is, most of the time, you just kill them. If they max you, you, you a lot of the time, like if you have cold by, you often just let maxi resolve as long as you have game, as long as you can calculate game. Because you go for game, and you hold the max, and you hold the cold by for Ash. They usually can't Valor or Imperm you because they have cards on the field, or, they ha or, or they're under Lost World and they can't Valor you. Um... And then you just go for game. How do you go for game? You abuse Pentastag and Dugatus. So Dugatus doubles the attack of Conductor. Makes it 7,000. Which is very good if you don't Prosperity. And if you Prosperity, that means that the Conductor is effectively doing normal damage. Which is still very good. Uh, because it's doubled. And then you use Pentastag. Because Pentastag, what it does is that if Conductor points to it. Uh, no, if it points to Conductor, sorry. Um, and Conductor attacks into a defense position monster, which is going to be their entire field, unless of, uh, except for Unlink Monsters, because you book their field with Conductor. 
Um, it inflicts piercing battle damage. So that means basically every single attack conductor gets in is going to be uh, is going to be damage because it's either attack or defense, and then there's inflicting piercing. And then when you finish them off uh, with Tyranno, you still have like the Pentastag and the Tugars to attack with, which uh, is the usual extra damage that you need on top to kill them. As I said before, if they have two monsters, that's usually enough. Um, because that's... You can do the math. But that's usually very close to 16k. And then with the extenders and the field and the board that you have, you can do... Um, exactly that or a bit above there's usually it's usually between like 16 to 18k damage uh assuming prosperity obviously if there is no prosperity involved it's very easy um you probably don't even need to think that much and in the very crazy hands which i'm not saying always happen but they do happen you can do 20k um which who asked nobody needs to do that but yeah it's possible um otherwise yeah um, I'll go through the extra deck a little bit and explain some stuff. So Dolka is your main Nibiru protection, even though I don't know if Nibiru is that popular in Master Duel. Um, I haven't seen that much of it. And in best of three formats, it's really weird because people don't really keep Nibiru against you post-set because you're playing Dino and they just know that Misk just protects all the Dinosaur cards. Which is good for you because that means you can make the, the Goddess of Pentastag with confidence because they're not going to Nibiru them. Um, and you need the Pentastag to stay on the field when you attack. Um, Lagia is a card that you make in simplified game states or against Shadow Invoked sometimes. Um, doesn't come up that much. Um, if you're trying to build this deck and you don't have enough ultra rares, I would say Lagia is one of the ones that you don't need to craft. Dweller is very self-explanatory. It's very good. If they ever make you go first, uh, you need to have Dweller because some, because usually you're choosing between Dweller, Dolka, or Baguska to make, depending on the matchup. And Dweller is very important in that regard. It's the card you make against Drytron. Um, when they make you go first. Rhapsody um, is a card that shouldn't be here. It should be Castell. I already said this. But the reason it's Rhapsody is because it outs Shen Shen. Because you kill Shen Shen and then you banish it. Which is really important for this deck. Um, Tornado is a good back removal card. Um, as well as Phoenix. You play both of them because you need to have like back removal in your extra decks. So you don't mean any. And the reason I didn't mean any is because... In this tournament format, I just thought, okay, since all X2 stop, I'm just going to take the success, uh, the, the concession um, against backward decks and just not main deck any backward removal and then side a lot. And usually your favorite game to in game during is backward decks. Um, so if I lose in Swiss against backward decks, I still top because I don't think I'll play more against more than like two backward decks. Um, I should be fine. Um, and even if you don't main deck backward removal, it's still winnable. Um, so that's good. Um... So yeah, you play Tornado and uh, Phoenix. You play Baguska. Baguska is very, very good. Especially if you're playing as Pure Zoo. Because you just summon Baguska and you, they have Lost World token with Lost World on your field. And they can't out it. It's impossible. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that's very nice. Um, at some point down the line, Pure Zoo players will catch up and have it out to Baguska if Dino becomes popular. But at the moment, mm, it's not happening anytime soon. The guys we already discussed. Zeus never comes up. This card should be Lambda. Um, it's always banished off prosperity, and then when you don't banish it off prosperity, you just don't use it. Excuse me. Um, you play Link Karibo in Secure Garden, and you have to do this because of your simple combos, because Link Karibo is the dino that is the non-dino for evolution pill that goes to your grave um, by making Secure Garden. Um, when you hand trap your opponent and you're going second, you can banish Secure Gardener off Prosperity because the only reason for Secure Gardener is that it puts a non-dinosaur in the grave. But if you hand trap them, there's already a non-dinosaur in the grave. Serb and Phoenix are good utility. Phoenix comes up more, Cerberus comes up less. You banish one of them depending on the matchup. Very early, you keep both. Unicorn and Access could barely come up, but they're useful. Unicorn is definitely more useful than Access Code because this deck doesn't have a hard time killing, so it doesn't need to play Access Code. And then Pentas deck is the best card in this deck, in my opinion. Um, a question some of you guys might have is, why do I play Giant Rex? And the reason to play Giant Rex is because going second, if you get Max Seed and your only engine is Oviraptor uh, Ovi plus Lost World, the only way you can kill them through Max Seed, which is Pentastack Dugaras usually, uh, with Conductor, 
uh, with that combination of cards, which is just Ovi and Lost World and nothing else. Ovi Lost World Misk does not apply. Ovi Lost World and any of the babies does not apply here. It's just Ovi Lost World. You have to play Giant Rex because that's the only way you get the extra level 4 body while also having enough materials to make Pentastag at the same time and then set up like Pentastag on top, Conductor below it, and Dugaris next to it. Um, so yeah, that's why you play Rex. Um, Rex is also how you beat Dweller if you ever get Dweller, but there's not that many decks playing Dweller right now. So it's not that bad, but it is a consideration for sure. Um, the thought process behind the side deck was just I wanted hatches that were good against Virtual World, which all of these are. Crow isn't that great, but it's good because it has a lot of coverage against every single deck in this in this in this meta at the moment. Um, Lancia is mandatory. I would never remove this card. It's good against Thunder and it's good against Virtual World, which are two of your hardest matches because of Colossus and Shen Shen VFD Chuche, um, and then just back removal. Um, your odds of seeing like Feather Duster or Lightning Storm or Twin Twister going second alongside Prosperity Math confirmed is around like 75%, which is ridiculous. Like you, you're in a very good position most of the time. Uh, and seeing two is like 50%. It's, it's very good for you. Um, that leaves one more thing that I wanted to discuss, which is why I'm not playing Nibiru. I think all the decks in the meta right now, which I have already explained, uh, Trizu, Drytron, Virtual World, um, Rock. I think all of these decks like just slap Nibiru, so there's no point in playing Nibiru. Like I think Lancey has a better hand trap than Nibiru against Rock because they just can't block dragon you. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, it's this video has been going on for like 21 minutes now. Um, I tried to be very in depth, very concise, simultaneously. Um, and yeah, this is the deck I played, and I had a lot of fun. And I would really recommend you guys to try this deck out. It's very difficult to play, but it's very fun once you nail it down. And it's very enjoyable, because I really like going second when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! It's one of these things that, like, make me feel comfortable when I feel like there is a deck that can reliably go second. That's usually a sign of a format that's not that ha not, not that bad, which I think is the case in Master Duel at the moment because of the decks people are playing. Um, down the line, the format will develop and the extra deck will become more concise. Usually the extra deck is very tight, but right now the meta is extremely wide, so it's not the case. Um... But yeah, that's basically it. Uh, for shoutouts, uh, shout out to Waf as usual. Shout out to the team, the disciples, the guys I'm recording this video for. Um, really happy to be on the team. Uh, the tournament was a great experience. They used uh, Smash.gg, which is a website that's like for tournaments. Um, it, I, I heard they use it for a lot of fighting games as well. It was very smooth, was very well run. Um, all of top four was Waf players, which was really nice. Um, and... Um, yeah, specifically shout out to Cormac and June um, and Rep Ryan, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. And please let me know in the comments if there are any questions and I'll be doing my greatest to assist all of you as I did in the Pure Zoo deck profile that we uploaded uh, like a week ago now, probably. Um, and yeah, take care, guys. Uh, check out our sponsors. Links will be down in the description. And yeah, have a good one. Take care, guys.